Hey everybody, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, and this is Ask Dr. Nerdlove, made possible by my generous patrons at Patreon.com slash DrNerdLove. I am here today to answer your questions about love, sex, dating, and self-improvement. If you've got a short dating advice question that you'd like to have answered, share it in the comments, and maybe you will have your question featured on here. This week's question is very simple. How can you be happy when you're single, especially when it seems like the universe is determined to remind you that everyone else is coupled up and you're not? This came from a lot of people this week in a multitude of places. In my inbox, all over Twitter, the Nerd Love Academy Facebook group, all over the place. A lot of my single fans see that Valentine's Day is coming up and it's leaving them with a lot of anxiety. Now, this is actually a topic that I have covered more than a few times before, including on a previous episode of this very show. That then went on to be one of my worst performing episodes ever. <laughs> but f**k it, I am doing it again, because when you're single, Valentine's Day is one of the most despised days of the year. And there is nothing quite like a day that seems devoted to making you feel like literally everyone else in the world is in a relationship Meanwhile, you're stuck watching all those other happy couples and getting to stew in the fact that you're single and that's terrible. And while it can feel pretty damn lonely most of the time, Valentine's Day is the day that the universe takes that feeling and just cranks it up to 11 because everywhere you turn, someone is trying to monetize the anxiety you feel about not having a date. Now, of course, at the same time, those same forces are trying to equate romance with spending money because, hey, we live in an end-stage capitalism hellscape. And really, do you truly love someone if you don't express it through conspicuous consumption? For real, Dunkin' Donuts is running ads for Valentine's Day donuts and pink velvet lattes because how can you tell someone you love them without donuts? Okay, maybe that's not a great example. The pink velvet latte looks kind of good. And honestly, I wouldn't say no to a donut right about now. Food is one of my love languages, okay? In fairness, though, the crass commercialization of Valentine's Day is, in fact, in line with the spirit of the season. Because, quite frankly, Valentine's Day is an artificial commercial holiday. That's not just the talk of single bitter people. What we think of as Valentine's Day is literally a 19th century invention concocted by printers and lace makers in order to sell smutty poetry in the name of a saint who does not seem to have actually existed and whose martyrdom was cobbled together from the tortures of other states. And now we celebrate it by overpaying for flowers, dinner reservations, and shitty chocolate. Seriously, the story of St. Valentine of Rome was made up in the 5th century in a work called Passio Mari et Marthai, where his martyrdom is conflated with a different St. Valentine, neither of whom are the official patron saints of romance. In fact, the first connection of romance to the feast day of St. Valentine was on a poem written by Chaucer to celebrate the wedding anniversary of Richard II, and that was in May, not February. But while all of that is true, none of that changes the sting of being single on Look at All the Couples Day. But here's the thing. The problem isn't Valentine's Day. It's in how we see being single as a sign that something's wrong. After all, we live in a culture that treats being single as a problem to be fixed and tells us that if you don't have a partner, that means that there is something wrong with you. And we internalize that. It's hard not to. You can count the number of stories in pop culture, TV, movies, radio, books, whatever, that don't include a love story subplot on the fingers of one foot. We see images of love and happy couples thrown around like confetti while singles are told that being alone is a handicap. And all of that is horse The truth is that you are the exact same person in a relationship as you are when you are single. Whether you are in a relationship or not, whether you have been single for a short period of time or for a much longer period of time that you'd like, or even if you have never had a relationship, is all irrelevant. None of that is value. It is strictly data. It is not a measure of your worth or your desirability as a person, but we still let that societal programming f with us and steal away our happiness. And because you all asked, I want to help you steal that happiness back. The key is to let go of this societal programming and to start learning how to be single 
even if you don't want to be. I know this feels impossible. I have been there. You feel that loneliness gnawing away in your guts like a hamster with a gland problem. But here's the ironic thing. Being comfortable with being single makes it easier to start a relationship. Gentlemen, tell me, have you noticed that when you're in a relationship, suddenly women seem to be crawling out of the woodwork to talk to you? And if you haven't had a relationship before, trust me. This is a thing. There is a reason for this. It's because you're in a place where you don't need them. And no, this isn't some women are only attracted to dudes who don't like the meme. When you're in a relationship, you are doing the things that make you more attractive to women. You just don't realize it. And since you are exhibiting all these attractive behaviors, now all these women, they're a little intrigued by you. You're behaving more confidently because, hey, you feel like you've got your sh together. You're bolder, less anxious about talking to people because you've got nothing to prove and even less to lose. So now you are able to talk to women without fear. You're not overthinking every word and every gesture and trying to read her like she's the matrix. You're able to make jokes and flirt because you believe in yourself and you're not tying your self-worth to whether or not this person likes you. You can get those same benefits when you're single, if you know how to be single and to be happy about being single. The problem is that for a lot of guys, the way they feel on Valentine's Day is their 24-7, 365. To get out of this, you have to break the cycle. And how do you do that? Well, you become the person that you are or would be in a relationship, but you do it now while you're still single, which I realize seems like a paradox, but stick with me. A relationship in a lot of ways is like Dumbo's magic feather. You're not suddenly different because you're dating someone. Having a girlfriend didn't create that sense of confidence out of nowhere. You already had all of its potential within you. Dating someone just gave you the permission to unlock it. But you can unlock all of that now without anyone else, without waiting for a relationship. Here's how. First, work on your attitude. I touched on this on the last episode and you should really go check that one out. So either click the link in the description or hit the doohickey in the corner. But it's like I said before, your attitude is destiny. People aren't interested in hanging around with a guy whose attitude towards everyone and everything is my life and them in particular. Negative people suck the energy out of the room. They leave the people in their lives feeling exhausted and quite frankly, folks quit wanting to hang out and spend time with them. And if you're surrounding yourself with other people with the same the attitude, all that does is magnify your own negative outlook because that's all you see, which creates this echo chamber that ends up creating this self-reinforcing cycle of bitterness and misery and loneliness. There is a reason why Oscar the Grouch isn't considered a sex symbol. Oh God, I just realized somebody's about to go draw a couple Oscar the Grouch. So you want to start with practicing positivity and gratitude. And I mean, actually count your blessings. Find the things in your life that are good. And yes, you do have things in your life that are good and worth living for and worth being happy about. Just the fact that you have the safety, security, and resources to even watch this means that you're in a place in time of unprecedented prosperity and health and have advantages that people throughout history would have started wars to achieve. But even if those things that you are grateful for are small, seemingly inconsequential things like, hey, I got to bed on time last night, or my cat is and adorable. Taking time out to practice gratitude and positivity has profound positive effects on your life. And it's like I said before, positivity is a habit. It is something you have to work at. The more you consciously choose to practice positivity, the more it becomes part of who you are and the more it makes you an engaging, attractive person that folks want to be around. Next, get your together. Part of why being single feels like the worst thing in the world is because you feel like you are powerless. It is like the universe itself has looked down on you, looked at all of your hopes and your dreams and said, nope. We in general don't like feeling like we have no control over our lives. It leaves us feeling helpless and hopeless. And that leads to despair, depression, and giving up. It's part of why we get angry when we see all those happy couples or all those reminders that, hey, 
Other people have dates. Other people have relationships. It's like God, it's like the gods themselves are taunting you, adding insult to injury, the psychic equivalent of a bully holding your backpack just out of your reach and laughing at you as you try to grab it. To combat this, focus on the things you do have control over. Start with the place where you spend your most time. Your place, your house, your apartment, your bedroom. Do a deep clean, organize it, toss out the crap you don't want or don't need anymore. Maybe start with all those extra computer cables you've been holding on to just in case. I'm just saying. Once you've done this, or if your place is already in good shape, then look at other areas in your life. What are the things that you've been putting off that you know need to get done? Picking one lingering task and finishing it, whether it is a phone call that you need to make, emails you have to answer, paperwork you have to file, doesn't matter. It not only takes a weight off your mind, a weight that you likely didn't even realize was there, it helps feel like you're taking control back in a time and place when it seems like everything is just spiraling into chaos. And once you've done that, pick another task and then another and another after that. It could be large, it could be small, but either way, it should be something that needs to be done and improves your life in some material way. Taking these little tasks helps remind you that you do have control. Fixing one thing, getting one victory, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, is a sign to yourself that you aren't powerless or helpless. And while something that seems as minor as cleaning your apartment may feel insignificant in the grand scheme of things, those little victories like that create cracks in the mountain of helplessness and despair that you feel. It reminds you that you do have agency in your life and that you can make things better, even just a little bit at a time. Keep at it and those changes and victories add up over time, destroying that sense of helplessness, increasing your sense of control and accomplishment, and giving you confidence that you have been lacking. And confidence, say it with me now, is sexy. Next, you want to find the things in your life that give you purpose. Just as that sense of helplessness causes us to despair, most of us don't have anything in our lives that drive us or give us something to work towards. It's like the man said. Purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. Yes, everything does eventually go back to Fight Club. Hi, you must be new here. The point is that this lack of purpose leaves a hole in our lives that we are trying to fill. And a lot of times, we are trying to fill it with relationships. Relationships that honestly still wouldn't make us happy even if we were in them because it doesn't actually fill the need. It is just one more thing that has been sold to us as the solution that will finally make us complete. But it won't. Other people can't complete you. Only you can. There is no missing piece that is going to fix you from the outside. The only answers come from within. Finding something to strive for, something to work towards, will bring you satisfaction. It'll give you something that you look forward to. It'll give you purpose and passion and a sense of certainty and drive that other people simply don't have. And that certainty, that passion, and that direction, not only will that make you stand out from the crowd, but it is an incredibly attractive trait in a man. If you want a suggestion on where to start, I'd say start looking for ways that you can make life better for other people. Volunteering, whether it's phone banking for a local political campaign, walking the dogs at your no-kill shelter, building houses for Habitat for Humanity, serving stew at the soup kitchen, even just cleaning up your neighborhood and helping your community are all great places to start because you are doing something that's unequivocally good in this world and that helps you realize that your presence in other people's lives has made the world just a little bit better. And not to put too fine a point on it, kindness and compassion are incredibly sexy. In fact, studies have shown that the intersection of confidence and kindness makes men very sexually desirable. Next, you need to get a life. Part of why guys feel so much despair at the idea of being single is because they're waiting for a girlfriend before they start living. And that's not gonna happen. You're waiting for someone else to give you permission for your life to begin. And not living your life is actually gonna push them away and leave you lonely and unfulfilled. You have to stop waiting for someone else to give you permission for your life to begin. Going out, having a life, being part of community, doing things that you enjoy just for the love of doing it 
makes you happier. That, in turn, makes you more fun to be around, which encourages people to want to spend more time with you. And more importantly, having a life, having a community, makes it easier to meet people. I, now, I've talked about this recently on my episode about creating abundance. Again, hit the thing or check the link in the description. But having people in your life means that you also meet more people. The more folks you have who like spending time with you and hanging out with you, the more opportunities you have to meet even more people. And having those people in your life gives you that sense of security and confidence that lets you talk to women without fear. Because now you don't need their approval or their validation. It makes you a happier person. And we like people who are happier. It helps you feel at ease. That puts other people at ease. It lets you unlock all of these benefits that come from being in a romantic relationship without needing to be in the relationship in the first place. Because straight talk, gentlemen, being in a relationship will not turn you from incel Dr. Jekyll into the Chad Mr. Hyde. It is not magic. You need to be living the life that you would be living if you were dating someone because the love of your life should be the love of your life. Loving your life and being satisfied with it is what makes you someone people will be into and attracted to because your life will be pretty good and they would love to be part of it. And don't get me wrong, this does not mean that wanting a relationship or working towards one is bad. It just means don't make it the center of your universe. Let a relationship be the capstone on a life that you would love to live not the foundation. One more thing, just one final tip. Instead of stressing about Valentine's Day for this year, focus on Valentine's Day for next year. The holiday may be bullshit, but it is as good of a time as any to decide that you are going to make a change. You can decide that this is going to be the year that you create the life and learn the skills that helps you find the relationship you have always dreamed of. And if that is a thing that interests you, then you want to join the Nerd Love Academy Facebook group because I'm gonna be making some announcements there over the next couple of weeks and my patrons and the members of Nerd Love Academy are gonna be the ones who get the first crack at it. So, you know. Go check it out. So that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you're digging this, be sure to let me know in the comments and be sure to share your ideas for your non-Valentine's Day plans. And of course, if you have a question that you wanna have answered on here, leave that in the comments as well. Who knows, maybe the question I will answer next time will be yours. And if you need an answer right away or you want a guaranteed answer, check out my private coaching options. The priority email service may be exactly what you need. Links are in the show notes, so go check that out. Meanwhile, follow me on Twitter at, at DrNerdLove, join NerdLove Academy at facebook.com slash group slash DrNerdLove, and as always, check out my other videos, hit the logo to subscribe, and I will see you here next time with more about love, sex, and dating. Later.